Hello everyone and welcome to Willow Cove Crafts, my channel here on YouTube where I talk about knitting and sewing and my other crafty endeavors. My name is Emily and today is part two of going through all of my old shawl projects and deciding if I should finish them or rip them out. In case you are new here, I have been doing a series where I have been going through all of my old works in progress and deciding if I should keep them or if I should rip them out and repurpose the yarn for something else. And in case you missed it, last month I went through all of my sweater projects and this month I am going through all of my shawl projects. So if you missed any of those videos, I will link them below. But I had 18 unfinished shawl projects. So I am going through them in three parts and today is part two. So as always, I will show you the project. I will try and remember what yarn I used, when I started it, why I stopped working on it, and then make a decision as to whether or not I think I will finish that thing someday or if I should just rip it out and reclaim the yarn and knit something else with it. So let's get started. Let's talk about some shawls. First shawl I'm going to have a look at today is one that I have shown on the channel before. So if you've been watching for a while, you might recognize it. And that is My Shawlography by Stephen West. This was Stephen's Mystery Knit Along in 2021, I believe. So I started this he does his mystery knit along every October. So I would have started this in October, 2021 because I did participate in the mystery knit along that year. And I've gotten pretty far on it. I am on the border. It's this striped applied border. And yes, let me talk about the yarn I used. So I, used the Wool Barns Cashmere 4 ply for this in five different colors. I don't remember all of the colorway names, but I will look them up and I will put them in the show notes below this episode. So if you're curious, but I've got all five skeins right here. And Yes, this one is a little tough for me because I don't really like it, but I'm almost done with it. Um, I'm starting to have a little bit of a reservation about the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. I've participated the last three years and I haven't finished any of the shawls. I haven't been like amazingly thrilled with any of them, especially this year. Um, again, it's just like personal preference. I am really simple and classic in the types of things I like to wear. And so Stephen West, most of his designs are just not really my cup of tea. And I participate in the Mystery Knit Along because it is fun. It's very exciting to get a new clue delivered to your inbox. And it's fun to knit along with a ton of other people. 
but they're just such big shawls. There's so much knitting and I haven't been super thrilled about them or you know I know that going in like I know it's gonna be this like kind of wacky design but I just like don't think I'll wear them um so yeah it's you know a bit a bit sad I do think I'm gonna finish this one just because I'm right at the border I probably only have a couple days worth of knitting left so I'm gonna finish it, I'm gonna block it, maybe I'll gift it to someone, uh, maybe it will just hang in my closet as an art piece, you know, maybe put it over the back of a chair and it'll just be something interesting to look at, but I won't wear this. That's just the reality of the situation. So, I'm gonna finish this one, but I'm not like excited about it, unfortunately. Um, I know a lot of people who really love this shawl, all right? I don't mean to like knock on anything. It's personal preference. The fact that I really am so, so basic in the things I like to wear, like this is a personal problem, the fact that I don't like this shawl. So if you made this shawl and you loved it, I'm so happy for you, but it's just not for me. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna finish it up just because I think I could. I think I could finish it within a week if I picked it up again. Um, so yeah, that's my plan for this one. We're off to a little bit of a an unexciting start. Like I'm gonna finish it, but like. I feel kind of wah wah about it. <laughs> While we're talking about Stephen West, I have a, another pattern on the go by him. This one's pretty old and I haven't ever shown it on the podcast before, but this is the Moherino Medley. It is a more of a, a wrap a scarf shape than a shawl and it's got these different sections of like chevron variation and then some feather and fan so the whole thing kind of waves and you just get all these fun textures and you know different combinations of colors the yarn I am using for this, again, I'm gonna not go through the specific yarns in this video. I will put them all in the show notes below in case you're interested. But um, I used a couple different hand dyed yarns for this wrap and I cannot hold up all of them, but I have this white speckled and this really light pink and this tan. Maybe I can hold all of them. And this kind of medium toned tweed. So this is my color palette. And then I also, I've thrown them all over the floor. Um, I'm also using a white mohair. So, yes, again, I'll put all the yarns below in case you are interested, but they are hand dyed, so I don't know. I cannot speak to their current availability because I did buy them a while ago and they're hand dyed. So, um, I started this, Uh, I have it written in my notes, which I, of course, left on the other side of the room. I want to say I started this in December 2019. I remember I started it around Christmas. It was like a fun Christmas cast on for me. 
and I think it was pre-pandemic, but not super, super before. So I'm going to say December 2019 was when I started this. Maybe... I might have started it December 2020, actually. I take back what I said about it being pre-pandemic. Pre Anyways, it doesn't like really matter. It's a couple of years old. Um, and I do think I'm gonna rip this one out. Um, I really like this pattern. I was just talking about how um, most of Stephen West's patterns are not really my cup of tea, but there are a couple in there that I really like and this is one of them. I really enjoy some of his more subtle patterns and knitting them out of subtle yarn and yeah taking something that is otherwise kind of intended to be this big bold statement piece and just toning it down a little bit um this one kind of falls into the bucket of and i talked about this a bit last week of i'm not very far in it this is maybe a couple days worth of work and I just don't want to have it sitting around anymore. I would rather rip it out and revisit it in the future than just have it sitting around unfinished. So it is very possible that I will re-knit this again at some point, but just not at the moment. And yeah, I do want to kind of reclaim this yarn and it's possible that it could be used for something else. Um, it is a really pretty color combination, I think. Um, or maybe I'll just re-knit this at some point. Uh, it's a really fun pattern, and I do think I would get a lot of wear out of something like this. It's kind of fun, but, you know, pretty neutral. I think as a whole, this reads pretty neutral. So... This one's gonna get frogged, but it might get revisited in the future. Next up is the Wellerman Shawl by Caitlin Hunter. And I started this one in September, 2021. So it's like a little over a year old and I have shown it on the channel before. So you may recognize it. It's this big triangular shaped shawl that's knit from the bottom up. So you can kind of see and it's got this fun cabling on it. I am knitting this out of Hudson and West Forge in the Raven colorway. It's getting a little blown out, but it is a true black. I would say it looks kind of dark gray on the screen, but it is black. And I don't have much to say about this one. I am going to finish it. I really, really like this shawl. And I would say I'm about 60% of the way done. When you knit a bottom up shawl, the beauty of that is that you get your longest rows done first. And then as you go along, your rows get shorter and shorter. So, you know, I've got a good chunk a good chunk of the shawl done, even though it's looking a little thin and floppy at the moment. Um, and yeah, it is super fun. It's like completely charted, which I love. And I just love kind of like moving my little tracker up the chart to see where I'm at. And it's a black shawl, which I will wear all the time. So definitely going to finish this one. And... Not quite sure when. Um, this definitely is like a fall shawl. It's very spooky to me. It's black and it's got these like spindly trees. It reminds me a lot of Halloween. So I'll probably save this until fall sometime. I am not committing to knitting it this year, but you know, at some point in the future, around Halloween, I plan to finish the shawl. So this is a keep. Next up is another one that I have shown on the channel before. I started this in May 
of 2021, so pretty shortly after I started making YouTube videos. And this is the Hilda Bear Shawl by Fiber Tales. And it's got this really fun bobble texture all over it. And then it has a big cabled applied border. I am knitting this out of Knit Picks Preciosa in just the, the bare undyed color. And I'm going to rip this one out, which is very sad because I love this shawl and I really want it. Um, a couple of reasons I'm going to rip this out. First and foremost, the biggest one is that my gauge is way, way off. I did not gauge swatch because it's a shawl and I typically don't gauge swatch for shawls. I think it's, you know, it's not really necessary. It's probably a good thing to do to avoid something like this, but at the end of the day, if your gauge is a little off, you know, you might run out of yarn, you might have a shawl that's slightly different in size than the schematic indicates. So, you know, there's some downsides, but ultimately your shawl does not have to fit, and so if you're a little off in gauge, it doesn't really matter and so I often don't gauge swatch for shawls. What I should have done is knit a little bit and then measured my gauge because it's way too tight. I think the gauge for this is like 20 stitches per four inches and I'm at like close to 30 stitches per four inches. So at that tightness I don't even think this would block out to be the intended size. And yeah, I was knitting along and I was like, you know, I'm almost to the border of this shawl. And it's a big shawl. If you go look at pattern pictures, it's intended to be this very big voluminous shawl. And mine was just not shaping up to be that way. And then I finally measured it and I was like, oh, it's because I'm knitting super tightly. And, you know, I wanted a big behemoth shawl. And so I think I just need to rip it out. It's not gonna be what I want. And it's very unfortunate because bobbles take forever, but it is the way it needs to be, I think. Um, the other reason that now that I'm like holding this and looking at it, I think is like maybe not as important. Um, the Hildebert shawl, the original pattern, is knit in a more rustic yarn and I really liked the look of that. This is a single ply merino, so it's not rustic at all. Um, it does look really nice. It's got a nice halo. It, it does look a bit softer, obviously, than a more rustic wool would look. So I'll have to give that a think. Um, definitely gonna rip it out and knit it with a larger needle. I might use a different yarn and use this for something else. But this one, sadly, despite being beautiful and right up my alley, is gonna get ripped out. It's too small, it's too small. This next one is a bit of a hard one for me. I'm looking at it and I'm already getting like a bit nervous to talk about it. Um, so anyways, this is my design. And it's double-sided. And the yarn I was using to knit it was um, spin cycle dyed in the wool in cold comfort and spin cycle versus in the slow and steady colorways. And it's an all over brioche cable. And again, this is my design. It doesn't have a name. And I started this last year in November, November, 2021. And I was very 
very excited about it. It was going to be my first pattern. I really love it. I'm still like looking at it now. I think it's beautiful. Um, but the reason this one is a bit tricky for me is, um, so I started it in November, like mid November. And then um, late November and December last year were very, very hard for me. Um, okay, I had to collect myself a little bit. Um, like I was saying, December last year was a really hard month. Um, late November to like early January, I would say. Um, I had a death in my family and then I myself had um, a very sudden and serious medical situation and so December was just like there's just a lot of like sadness and fear and uncertainty and you know I've I've talked before about how like I feel like my memories just like get infused into my knitting projects like I can pick up anything I've knit and just like remember what was going on in my life at that time and as beautiful as this shawl is it's just like filled with a lot of really bad memories so um I want to keep it for now I I don't want to rip it out because I love it. I really do love it. And like everything is still like kind of fresh. Like it's been a year, but like when something traumatic happens, like a year is just not enough, you know? And ultimately, like I want to try and reframe my attitude around this one because you know, my story was a good one. Like there was like this time where, you know, we didn't know what was like happening to me and, you know, lots of tests and doctor's visits, but like ultimately like I triumphed, I lived and it's like, it's very emotional for me, obviously, but like, you know, my story had a happy ending in regards to this or like at least at this time and you know I want to look at this and like remember that like yes like something hard happened to me but like I came out the other side and I'm perfectly fine now and yeah but it's still like hard to look at like it, I just like I pulled it out I haven't looked at it in a while because like I it reminds me of this this really tough moment in my life and yeah I'm hopeful that like with time I'll be a little more you know I think uh, I don't know how to say it like I hope I have a better attitude about what happened and like can look at the bright side of things of like Things turned out well for me. Um, and that this is a success story, not a sad, scary story, if that makes sense. So, okay, that got very personal. I feel a little, um, uh, my friends and I call it a, uh, what is the phrase we use? It's like a personal hangover, like you share something very personal and then you like feel really awkward about it after the fact or you're like, maybe I said too much. Um, but we're all friends here, so I think this is gonna go in. All right, let's end on a happy note. Um, this final shawl I'm gonna show you today is the Satellite by Andrea Mowry. 
And this is gonna be a keep. Um, so the yarn I am using for this is, um, so there is a mohair. The white is a mohair held double. This is tussock silk, I wanna say, by Pearl Soho. And then my three colors are Linen Quill by Pearl Soho. And again, I will put all the colorway names down below. Um, this shawl has a lot of really good memories for me. Um, I bought this, so Dan and I went on a trip to New York City in late January of 2020. So right before the pandemic started, um, we went to New York City, we went for work. Uh, Dan and I work at the same company and we sometimes get the opportunity to travel together. So we went um, for work on a Thursday and Friday and then we stayed the weekend to spend some time in New York City. And um, I had never been to Pearl Soho and I've spoken before about how much I love Pearl Soho. They have a really special uh, nostalgic place in my heart. Um, and I really wanted to go see it. And I'm glad I did because, um, not that I've been in New York City since then, but, um, you know, the pandemic started shortly after and everything closed down. And, you know, I got this opportunity at like the perfect time. So, um, we went to Pearl Soho and I really wanted to buy something. The store was beautiful. I loved visiting. And so I bought some linen quill and uh, their mohair to make the satellite shawl. Which I'm about, I don't know, maybe 30% of the way through. So there's still a, a significant amount of knitting left to do on this one. It looks pretty big, but as you know, uh, those last rows get super long. Um, and this one is just really fun because like you're alternating between these different sections and it makes it grow very quickly. And I think the reason I stopped knitting on this one was I think it was because the pandemic started and, you know, everyone was in a really weird mental space at that moment, as I'm sure you all can relate. And I think I honestly, like, was feeling, like, sad and nervous about the beginning of the pandemic and wanted a new knitting project to distract me. And so I abandoned this one for something else. Isn't that the way it always goes? Um... So yeah, I do want to finish this one. It's so soft and it's so light and I love the colors. I think I'll wear this one a lot. So lots of good memories tied to this one. Um, you know, it makes me think of this trip I went on with Dan and of course those types of memories are always very special to me. So definitely gonna finish up this one. And that is everything for today. So part two, we've gotten through a total of 12 of my 18 shawl projects. So next week I am planning to record part three. It will come a little bit late because Sunday is Christmas and I typically record on Sundays. So I'm not going to make a video on Christmas, but I am going to plan to record on Monday the 26th. So, um... Remember to subscribe, leave a comment, give this video a like, and I will chat with you all next week for part three, the final installment of my Shawl Whips series. Bye everyone, have a happy Christmas if you celebrate, otherwise have a good end of your year. I guess I'll talk to you before the end of the year, but we're, we are fast approaching the end of December. So I'll chat with you all soon. Bye.